Hi there. In this video, we're going to talk about university technology transfer. That is the dissemination of creations made at university labs, such as this one, here at the Electrical Engineering and Computer Science Building on North Campus of the University of Michigan, to the public. Every day in our lives, we use products and services that are based on creations made in university laboratories. One high-profile example of this is Google. Google is based on the PageRank algorithm that was invented by Sergey Brim and University of Michigan alumnus Larry Page while they were PhD students at Stanford University. They use funding provided by the National Science Foundation to come up with their initial creation. Then they work with Stanford's Technology Transfer Office to figure out the best way to turn this early technological innovation into an actual product or service that the public could use. They chose to license their intellectual property rights to a startup company formed by Larry and Sergey, Google, and the rest is history. But technology transfer didn't always work this way, and it didn't always work this well. Prior to 1980, the law was that the federal government would own the intellectual property rights and inventions created using federal funding. The federal government could not grant exclusive licenses. They could only grant non-exclusive licenses. Furthering the problem was that there were 26 different government agencies that had their own set of rules for commercializing inventions created with federal funding. And it simply wasn't working that well. At most, 5% of inventions created with federal funding were actually being turned into products or services that the public could use. So in 1980, Congress passed the Bayh-Dole Act. The Bayh-Dole Act allowed universities to elect to retain title in inventions created with federal funding. It allowed universities to grant both exclusive and non-exclusive licenses to industry partners. And it allowed universities to collect royalties that they would then share with the inventors of that technology. And they would also reinvest into further research at the university to spur additional innovation. Universities will transfer these intellectual property rights to an industry partner through a license. That license can be an exclusive license or it can be a non-exclusive license. And the industry partner can be an existing company that's been around for decades, or it can be a new startup company formed for the specific purpose of taking this university intellectual property from its early stages to an actual product or service that's sold to the public. Universities often receive financial consideration for these licenses. That financial consideration can be in the form of a small upfront payment, a running royalty on net sales made by the licensee of products that are covered by the intellectual property rights held by the university. It can be in the form of annual minimum fees, milestone fees. And in the case of startup companies, universities will often take a small chunk of equity in that company. This can help both sides because early stage tech companies often don't have the financial resources to pay an upfront payment or running royalties. And equity makes sense. More and more universities are investing other resources besides just intellectual property to help their startup companies commercialize the creations made in the university labs, such as this one. Those resources include incubator space, mentoring on the business and technology side, programs designed to teach researchers how to actually turn their creations into a product that fits a market, such as the i program funded by the National Science Foundation and hosted at universities such as the University of Michigan. Other resources include financial investment or law schools such as the University of Michigan Law School are more and more creating transactional and intellectual property legal clinics that provide free legal services to startup companies. One example of this is the Entrepreneurship Clinic here at Michigan Law School, part of the Zell Entrepreneurship and Law Program. So as you can tell, universities take technology transfer very seriously. And more and more, we're transferring creations from the laboratory out to the public. And that's a general overview of university technology transfer.